This is the latest video from Brian Leak's disinformation campaign, and he did not provide a link to the video that he used. But I've watched a few videos by Dave Doyle in the past, so here is the original. Here's a list of his videos from his channel, which is called Geospatial Users Group, and I'll leave a link in the description. Now, Brian used less than one minute of the video I have circled in red on the right, Vertical Datums by Dave Doyle. So this took some serious cherry picking because everything within these videos says that in surveying, both a level line and a level surface are curved because we live on a globe. In fact, about a minute after Brian's video ends, Dave Doyle brings up this diagram. So first I'll play Brian's video. It's very short, only 21 seconds long. And then I will continue with that video to show you the next subject that Dave Doyle gets into. As well as terrestrial observations, well, to one extent or another, the process of leveling has not changed in well over 150 years. It is still a terrestrial measurement system that has limited sight differential. Uh, and particularly in geodetic leveling, uh, about the farthest you can go is going to be about 50 meters. So you, you, you can't make observations 100 meters or 200 or 300 meters. But the process, and particularly in geodetic leveling. And now I'll continue where Brian left off. Also, like Brian, I'm playing this a little bit faster at 1.5 times the speed just to save some time on this video. Uh, about the farthest you can go is going to be about 50 meters. So you, you, you can't make observations 100 meters or 200 or 300 meters. But the process of leveling, as you see from the pictures here, pretty much looks the same today as it did back in the 1920s or 30s. Here you see the, the pictures of the coast surveyors out with, with the old optical level, actually a fissure level, and you've got two rodmen out. Well, this, the same process is true today, although increasingly we're seeing the use of digital leveling so that the observer themselves do not have to read the rods. The instrument is reading the rod. And uh, in my personal opinion, the, the high quality digital barcode levels that are produced by a number of manufacturers today are the finest surveying instruments that have ever been made. If they're taken care of, they are just the best. Uh, and they can produce quite phenomenal results. But again, they're expensive and they have limited uses. Uh, so for example, uh, first order leveling or even second order class one leveling, you have to have single piece rods. So a couple of meter single piece rod First, A is expensive, it's got to be calibrated, and you might get a sense it's kind of hard to move around. You can't just fold it up and put it in the back of the truck. So, geodetic leveling is the best way to go about this, but again, to highlight, very time consuming, uh, very expensive. And no matter how well you do the leveling, you're still constrained by some, a number of different factors that are regrettably not terribly well known at this time. And that deals with the gravity, the gravity surface of the Earth. And remember, we're not talking about the whole Earth. We're talking about the, the local environment that you're, you're working in. How gravity changes from place to place because of the underlying differences in the geological structure. The, the, the direction of gravity will change and, the, and the, the, the velocity will change. So what occurs is we have a series of what are commonly referred to as equal potential surfaces. And they're referred to as level surfaces, meaning that if I have a, uh, an equal potential surface, I define some surface, water does not flow along that surface. So here's an example. We have selected this dotted blue line. And this dotted blue line here is referred to as the geoid. We might also be thinking of it as the surface that defines our vertical datum. In this case, the North American vertical datum of 1988. And that is defined as the height of a specific benchmark at the mouth of the St. Lawrence Seaway up in Canada. So that benchmark, if, if we think about it, that benchmark is that blue dot right there. Okay? And now if we extend it through the surface of the continent, that surface, again, moves a bit due to the changing nature of the gravity field below it. Now when Dave says there's about a 50 meter limit for a very highly accurate first order geodetic survey, what it really reflects is how accurate can the surveying rod be read. Now remember, these are for elevations of a vertical datum. Now a little bit later, I'm going to play you a video for the horizontal datum where surveyors were actually taking readings over miles of distance. Now here's an example where we're comparing the working range of two optical levels by Bosch. And you can see that the GOL32, which is 32 times the magnification, has a working range up to 400 feet, but the GOL26, which is only 26 times the magnification, has a working range of only 330 feet. 
Now, when it comes to the horizontal plane, both of them have the same accuracy of plus or minus 1 16th of an inch for 100 feet. That is the equivalent or plus or minus 3.3 inches when you extrapolate that out to one mile. Of course, this is one reason why balance foresight and backsights are required with differential leveling for accurate surveys, because you need to eliminate the instrument error. So why do flat earthers keep claiming that you can't use an auto level beyond 50 meters? Because when you set up an auto level and you look over long distances, it is quite easy to see and measure curvature drop. And here's a very good example right here. This is from a video I made when Bev from Try Thinking had an Earth Awakenings live stream. And he was on a beach. You can see they have a phone camera hooked up to the auto level. And right now they are taking a reading from the leveling rod right next to that auto level. Now you can see that the horizontal reference height of his auto level is about 1.235 meters above the beach surface. Now this is when Bev and his companion are about 500 meters away and it's quite obvious that there's no way you're going to be able to read that leveling rod. But it's also quite obvious that his crosshairs are targeting distant Blackpool Tower right at the base of the tower of that building. So what I did is I found a photograph of Blackpool Tower and I scaled it to the tower that we see in Bev's photograph. And we can see that the horizontal reference height is well above the street level and most definitely above the beach below that building. So this would be the estimated street level of 8 meters in Bev's photograph. So the truth is, this is measured evidence of curvature drop because Bev's auto level is targeting Blackpool Tower at a much higher elevation than 1.235 meters. Of course, Bev and his buddies had to deny reality. So of course, one of the excuses they came up with is that you can't use an auto level beyond its working range. Now we do need to factor in the auto level's horizontal air, but at 1 16th of an inch over 100 feet, that would only be plus or minus 1 meter over that 12 mile distance. So let's take a look at a different video where Dave talks about surveyors making measurements over miles of distance. Now remember, Brian used a video that dealt with vertical datums or elevation. But in this video, Dave's going to be talking about horizontal datums, and it's going to be the use of triangulations to establish benchmarks over very long distances. And this is a quote, so as you can see, he's going to mention some distances that are well beyond 50 meters. And again, this will be 1.5 times the speed just to make this video shorter. And that person would then measure the angular difference through all of these triangles. And then somebody else would go to another one and another one and consequently. So you would, you would have, in its simplest form, you would have a triangle defined. So let's look at this one over here. Surveyor would go out, you'd have three surveyors. They would measure the angles of this triangle. And realizing that a triangle, uh, the angles of a triangle have to amount to 180 degrees. Mind you, there's curvature of the Earth. And so we're, we're really dealing with, with slightly different uh, math. But let's, let's just you know, take it as simple as possible for the moment. Um, if I know these angles, then I know the three angles of, of the triangle. But these are long distances. They might be 10, 15, 20 in some areas, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100 miles. How am I going to measure that? I need to have at least one distance that I know. So before the, again, before the advent of GPS, they would take a lot of time to actually measure the distance between two of those points. It's referred to as a baseline. So I think it's time that the globe deniers wake up and smell the coffee. There's absolutely nothing in any of Dave's video that supports the foolish claim that a level surface is the same as a horizontal plane. And that's because we live on a globe. 